The Economist, co-founder of democracyatwork.info, the author of numerous books, including his most recent, The Sickness is the System, When Capitalism Fails to Save Us from Pandemics or Itself, democracyatwork.info, rdwolf with two fs.com, profwolf on Twitter uh, with two fs. Professor Wolf, welcome back. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, the interest rates are in the news and, and the Fed says that, yeah, they're going to raise interest rates to try to tamp down inflation and all this kind of, you know, all this kind of thing. Um, how specifically does the Fed regulate interest rates and how do those interest rate changes alter or affect the probably the two biggest markets that might, you know, bounce off the average person, the housing market and the stock market? Well, the, the first question is very easy. They have a number of mechanisms they can use. The Fed lends money to banks. It can change the interest rate that the banks have to pay, and they in turn uh, typically lead the banks to adjust the interest rates uh, they charge. The Federal Reserve also buys and sells uh, Treasury securities. And by changing the price of that security, you, in effect, change the interest rate that whoever buys it uh, has to get uh, as a result of having paid either more or less for it. So that's fair, fairly straightforward, and everyone understands it. The really big question is the second one you asked. What are the effects of it? And right now we are being told by people who know, that is, the biggest bankers in the country who are very close every day with the Federal Reserve. Let's remember, most of the uh, people on the Federal Reserve Board of Governors were and will go back to being big bankers around the country. That's who these people are. Uh, what the question is that we're hearing is only whether they'll raise the interest rate three times or four times. At least that's the bulk of the question. So we know that interest rates are going up. And so the real question is, what does that do? And the answer is, it really whacks the American economy. Exactly how it will do that, I'll go through in a minute, uh, but it'll do it in a number of ways, all of which will slow this economy down. And that's what everybody is worried about, even those who know that we have an inflation that's hurting us, who want it to stop so it stops hurting us, and who want to raise interest rates as a way to slow the inflation, but don't quite face up to the fact that even if that works and you slow the inflation, you're going to pay a heavy price because of the effects of rising interest rates. So quickly, here to go through with them. Number one, because we've had historically unprecedented low interest rates for the last 20 years because of the three crashes of our economy, dot-com, subprime mortgage, and now the COVID crisis, record low interest rates, everybody and his brother and his company have been borrowing money because it's next to free money. Interest rates of 1%, half a percent, even negative sometimes, means that every company that had a problem, whatever that problem was, could most quickly and cheaply solve it by borrowing virtually free money, which the Federal Reserve was creating and pumping into the economy anyway. So you had all this money at a virtually zero, or close to zero interest rate. So we have a country that is mired in debt like we've never seen before. Record corporate debt, record government debt, and already very high uh, household debt which means that if you raise interest rates, the burden of that debt, the cost to you of servicing the debt, as we call it, paying off, is going to go up. And Americans who have been whacked by the last two years of COVID plus a depression, who are now being further whacked by an inflation, are staring down the barrel of a gun pointing at them that their interest charges for their home, for their credit card, for any loans they may need to survive, all of those are going to take more money out of them than they did in the past. And really, you're looking at, at an economy 
that is in desperate shape if it has to choose between an inflation, which is bad, and raising interest rates, which is bad. You know, when you're at that point with such options, you know you've kind of come to the end of the line. So we've got uh, Powell, uh, by the way, who <laughs> is a Republican banker or was, yep. um, uh, you know, looking at this. And obviously, if we raise interest rates and it slows down the economy, that's not going to be a good thing for the Biden administration and the Democrats in the election this fall. Number one. Number two, there's this whole issue of the psychology of inflation. Um, Congressman Pocan uh, just a half hour ago said that uh, they, there's a new study out showing that fully a third of all the inflation we're experiencing right now is is in the automotive sector, and that's because of this shortage of chips. So it's you know these supply chain issues. In other words, this will be transient. So why are we messing with interest rates to deal with it? Well, one of the answers appears to be that once the psychology of inflation gets baked in. Um, you've got to kind of break that. I mean, that was the big thing that Volcker was dealing with back in the 70s. So, you know, to what extent is this just a dance for public consumption that, that Powell is doing, or to, to what extent, extent will it, could it have a, a really bad political impact on the Democrats, and, and might Powell be up for that? I think the problem is that the Democrats have to face is that an inflation, which we were told wasn't in the cards by the Fed, which was wrong about that. Obviously, uh, the inflation was in the cards because we have it now. We're now supposed to believe a Fed that tells us how long it will last? Really? You know the future? I thought that was a, a, a skill reserved to those folks in, in, in uh, country fairs who will tell you your future as an amusement. Uh, they don't know what's going to happen. Britain is now experiencing an inflation, which suggests that this may be a broader problem. There's as much evidence that it will last long as there is evidence like the chips that it won't. And therefore, the problem for the Democrats is, do you really want to go into a midterm uh, election this November with an inflation that is causing everybody a headache that they can see every day? Or... Will you be less damaged if you have interest rates rising? And that usually takes a bit longer to whack the economy. Maybe you can slither through. I think that's the real calculation, and that's made them decide, yes, let's go for the rising of the interest rates, because there is another issue here that maybe needs to be said. The mentality of an inflation does sink in. As people realize that prices keep going up, they understand, whether you're a business or an individual, that if you're thinking of making any kind of purchase, especially a big one, make it now. Don't wait, because it's going to cost you more two months from now, six months from now. And so people rush in, which has in our capitalist system the perverse consequence that it makes the inflation worse by everybody rushing in to buy before the prices rise. Everybody who knows this game understands that, and my guess is the Federal Reserve is terrified about where this inflation might go, whatever they tell us about it being transient. They want to talk it down, but they now know that they may not be able to do that, so they're going to raise the interest rates and take the risk of what that will do to the housing market. Look, interest rates going up immediately makes the cost of a house go up because you have to pay more on your mortgage. And that will slow down the, the market in housing. It will slow down the market in buying automobiles, uh, and, and, and on and on and on. It'll whack people on their credit cards. These are things that people will feel and see almost as much as they will feel and see the inflation they're now suffering. So the government is choosing between which of these will damage its voter uh, appeal more right. and having <laughs> us all watch as they make that choice. Um, real quickly, there's another theory out there that um, over the last two years, because we have not been able to buy services, we haven't been able to go to restaurants, theaters, get massages, you know, whatever. We haven't been able to buy services. Um, people have a little more money in their bank accounts, and so they've been buying goods. So we've seen this explosion in the demand for goods. Uh, which is in part driving the supply chain crisis, but is is its own thing. 
and that surge in demand for goods is producing inflation, uh, you know, being increased prices, increased demand produces increased prices. And that th therefore, if COVID resolves itself somehow in the next three or four months and we kind of go back to normal and we start buying services again, something we haven't done for two years, um, that will reduce the inflation. What do you think of that? Well, I think it's a mistake to understand the demand uh, uh, in that way. The reason there was whatever increase in demand you might think there has been, and there's conflicting evidence about that, it had more to do with all the government programs pumping money into the economy, uh, the, the, the PPP program, the extra money for unemployed people, and all the rest of it. That's being withheld now. It's all, those programs are winding down, and that is having a negative effect on the economy. Normally, when that happens, prices don't go up. If prices go up at a time when people are less and less to spend, then it's pretty likely that the price inflation is coming from the supply side, from the business side. And that makes much more sense to me. Businesses around America who were hurt by the, de by the depression we went through and the COVID, they want to recoup their profits. They're raising their prices. And as long as that continues to be their mentality, they keep doing it in the face of whatever the demand is. That's a big problem. The wonders of capitalism, eh?